Okay, welcome back students. In this lecture, we're going to actually add a legend to the project we've been working on using SVG graphics. Now the first question we want to ask is where do we want to put the legend? Because it's HTML, we can put it anywhere where we have HTML code in our project. If your map element does not take up the entire web page, you can put it to the side or above it or below it or some other place, anywhere where there's HTML. In our case, it's a full screen map. It takes up the entire web page. But we have a sidebar where we can put HTML code, and that's where we're going to put our legend. But really, again, we could put it anywhere. We could put it in a pop-up, we could put it in an info box. But I'm going to come up to our sidebar here, and I'm going to put it right below the locate button. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a legend div. And then in that, I'm going to put a header. And I'm going to make it an H4 header, and I'm going to give it a class of text center and the heading is going to say linear projects and looks like I need some tabs in there to make it look neater and then after the header I'm going to make an, an SVG element and I'm going to give that SVG element a height of 270 pixels and a width of say 100 percent. And the reason I'm giving a width a percentage is because that width is going to vary with the screen size. And so I don't want to use an exact number of pixels. We want the width to be responsive. And then I'll create my first SVG element and that's going to be a line and it's going to start at with an x coordinate of 10 and a y coordinate also of 10 and then so that's coordinate of the beginning point of the line and then the end point of the line is going to be x coordinate of 40 and a y coordinate also of 10 so it's going to go to from 10 10 to 40 10 and then i'm going to give it a style attribute and that's going to have properties a stroke color is going to be Peru and the stroke width is going to be 2. Let's take a look at that real quick and see what happens. So here's our web map. If we open the sidebar, you can see there we have a title and our line. Now our title isn't centered. I wonder why that is. Let's take a look. Uh, yep, I spelled it wrong. It should be text center. All right, I'll save that. Okay, there's our map, there's our legend, and you can see now it's centered. Okay, now why do we have the stroke color of Peru and the stroke width of 2? Well, this is a legend for our linear projects. And if we come down to our styling function for linear projects, we see that for pipeline projects, the color is Peru. And so this first legend element is for a pipeline. So, how do we make it clear that that's a pipeline? Well, we're going to add some text. And we do that with an SVG text element. And the text is going to be pipeline. And we got to give it some attributes. We're going to give it the point of the lower left corner of the text. And that's going to be an X coordinate of 50 and a Y coordinate of 15. Now why is it x equals 50 and y equals 15? Well, 50 is because the line ends at 40. So that's going to give us a space of 10 pixels before the text starts. And then a y coordinate of 15 places the lower left corner of the text 5 pixels below the line because the line's at 10. So we'll start the text at 15. So the text will be kind of centered on the line. And we'll also give it some style properties. And the first one's going to be font family and the value of that property is going to be sans serif and then we'll have a font size with a value of 16 pixels okay let's see what that gives us I'll refresh the map and we'll open up the sidebar and there we see the text right here it's pipeline all right let's add the next one what's the next one going to be well if we come down Again, to our styling function for linear projects. The next one's flow line, and the color is navy. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy both of these and paste them back in again. 
And then I'm just going to change the Y coordinates for the second line to 40. I'm going to change the stroke color to navy. And then for the text, I'm going to change the Y coordinate to 35. And the text to flow line. Now it should be clear why we changed the text to flow line. What may not be clear is why we changed these coordinate values. And basically all I did was I added 30 to the Y coordinates for each of these elements. That's because I decided that the graphic symbol on these will be boxes about 20 pixels high, and then the space in between them, the vertical space in between them, will be 10 pixels. And so each element in a legend is going to have a total width of about 30 pixels. And actually, I think I did this wrong. This one needs to be 45. I added 20. All right, let's take a look. All right, we'll open a sidebar, and there we have it. Flow lines, navy. And what's next? Well, we'll go down to, again, to our styling function for linear projects. We see the next one is the estimated flow line, and it's also navy, but it has a dash array of 5.5. Five. So let's go back up. I'm going to copy and paste this last one again. I'll go through and I'll add 30 to all the Y coordinates. So we'll make this one 70. And this one, 75. We change this to flow line estimated. And I'm also going to add a dash array in here. So I believe that property is called stroke dash array. And that dash array is going to be 5.5. Five. So again, I'll save that. Go back, refresh. And I'll open the sidebar. And there we have it. Okay, I'm not going to bore you too much doing the rest of these one by one. I'm going to paste some code in here. And so the first one's going to be a dark green line with the text of electric line. Then we'll have a dark red line with the text access road confirmed. Another dark red line with the dash array again, 5-5, five, five, with the text access road estimated. And then we'll have extraction and finally other. And so these colors and dash arrays correspond exactly to the way they're displayed on the map using the styling function. And then the last one, I have a rectangle. And the rectangle is a gray dashed line, and that shows the right away for each one of these linear features. And you'll see that at each one, I just add 10, 100, 130, 160, 105, 135, 165. So I add 30 to each of these Y values. So let's take a look. And there we have it. Except for, it looks like I didn't change the color for extraction and other. Let's go do that real quick. What are those colors? So change that to indigo, this one to dark goldenrod. There we have it, that looks better. All right, now I said we can make these dynamic using a little bit of jQuery. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's take a look at this first. This legend, where it is, takes up a lot of space. And so maybe we don't want to show it all the time. So how are we going to make it so we can close this? So it's not displayed all the time, but we can display it or not display it at will. Well, we have everything enclosed in a div with an ID of legend. So we can make a button that'll open and close that entire div, right? We know how to do that. We'll make a button with an ID of button show legend. And the text of that button is going to be show legend. And for consistency's sake, I'll just add this same class again. These are bootstrap classes to make the button look pretty. So I'll just add that in there. So we have our button. I don't think I need this. I'm going to take that off. And then we just need to add an event handler to the click event of that button. And so I'm going to come down here. Let's see. Where do I want to do that? Right here I have a section called jQuery event handlers. And there I have the button locate. So... I'm just going to copy and paste this, change the selector to show locate, or show legend, I mean. And I'm going to change the event handler. What I want to do is I want to show or hide, or toggle back and forth between showing and hiding 
the legend when you click on the button. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use jQuery to select the div that has the legend and then I'm just going to say toggle that div when you click on the button and that will turn it on and off. That's all you have to do. So let's take a look. So we'll open the sidebar. There's our button. If we click it, the legend goes away. Click it again, the legend appears. So we've made it somewhat dynamic. But I'm going to do something in addition to this. And it might not be clear right now, but I think it will be clear in a little bit why I might want to do this. I'm going to put another button over here. It's going to be a font awesome icon. And that's going to toggle on just this detail part of the linear projects. And so to do that, I'm going to place all this SVG text right here. I'm going to indent it. I'm going to place it all in another div, and that div is going to have an ID of, say, legend linear projects detail. And I'm going to take this little guy here, cut it out, and I'll put it down at the end of my SVG. And so now, just these legend elements are in a div of their own. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to put a font awesome icon in here. I'm going to do that with the I tag. I'm going to give it an ID of button linear projects. I'm going to give it a class. Two classes actually. The first class is font awesome. And the second class is FA-Surfer. That tells us which one of those font awesome icons I want. And then our closing I tag. So I just added a button. And then I need to go down to where all my functions for my client linears are. And I'm going to select using jQuery the button linear projects element. And I'm going to add an event handler to the click event. And that event handler is going to toggle the detail on and off. So I'm going to select that div element. That one was called legend linear projects and again we're just going to call the toggle method all right let's save it and refresh and we'll open a sidebar and now we have this little legend button right here it's actually called the server is the name of the font awesome icon but i used it because it looks kind of like a legend clicking that now it's not doing anything so let's take a look at our code the ID is button linear projects and this legend linear projects detail. I think that's, yeah, this needs to have detail here. All right. We'll refresh. Open the sidebar and now clicking this leaves linear project as a heading open, but it gets rid of all this detail. Okay. I think you're getting the picture, at least I hope you are. The next one we're going to do, I'm just going to paste this in here, is Burring Owl Habitat. This time we have three rectangles, which one, one representing historically occupied Burring Owl Habitat, one representing not historically occupied Burring Owl Habitat, and one showing the 300 meter buffer as a dashed line. So I'm going to let you pause this video and then you can copy all this in. And actually, just to be consistent with the other one, I'm going to add a D here to make this legend. View our detail. And then we just need to add our event handler. So I'm going to copy this, the event handler for the linear projects, and paste it up here under Burring Owl functions. And then I'm going to change this to View Owl. And this. To view our detail. And so here we see our burning owl habitat. If we zoom the map in, you can see that it matches the symbology in our map, which is good. And we have a button that closes this detail part. Now I'm going to let you figure out how to do the rest of these. So we have eagle's nest, raptor nest, and great blue heron rookeries. So I'm going to let you figure out how to add the legend for those. 
For the raptor nest and eagle's nest, you could do a rectangle if you want, but just to make it interesting, I'd say go ahead and make it a circle since they're, they're all circular buffers. Well, I'm going to do one more thing real quick, and that is there is a leaflet legends control. It's a plug-in, and like I said, it doesn't create the legends automatically. You still have to create the legends yourself, but it's a control with a button, and you can use that control to open up a legend on the screen over here. If you don't like doing it in the sidebar, um, it's just a different option. So let's take a look at that real quick. I'm just going to Google leaflet legend, and here we go. We have a leaflet legend. So this took us to a no package manager screen, but there's a link to the GitHub page right here. So we'll do a normal download, and then we'll go to the downloads folder, take the leaflet legend master, and I'll cut it out of there. Go to my webmap 201 folder under hdocs, go to my source and plugins. I'm just going to paste it in here, extract it, and then in there all I really need is this leaflet, leaflet legend CSS and leaflet legend JavaScript. I'm going to cut those out of there, go back to plugins, paste it in here, and then I'll delete the zip file and delete this directory here with everything else in it. And then up here, I need to load it into the project. I will copy and paste this, but I'm just going to change this JavaScript to leaflet legend JavaScript. And I'll do the same thing with the CSS. Leaflet legend CSS. So now we have this plugin loaded into our project. Just need to create the control. So we'll declare it out here. And then I want to put it underneath the layer control. So I'm going to come down here where the layer control is added. And after that, I'm going to add my legend control. And I'll do that by setting the legend control variable to a new leaflet control legend object. And it's going to take some options. The first option is going to be the top right position. And the second option is going to be the control button option. And that's going to take object with a title property. I'm going to say legend. Let's see, this should be a comma, not a semicolon. And what this plugin does is it creates a couple divs that are empty. And we need to append some stuff to that div. So the first div has a class of legend container. And we're going to append to it the div with an ID of legend. So let's see what that does. Looks like it didn't do anything. Let's take a look. Here's what we didn't do is we didn't add it to the map. So let's do that. All right, let's try that again. Okay, now we have a button over here. It's kind of hard to see because there's nothing really on the button. But if we hover over it, the legend appears. And these buttons still work. All we've really done is added that div, that legend div, to this button instead of having it in the sidebar. So the show legend button doesn't open up a div here anymore. What it does is it opens up the legend in that sidebar. And that's a little weird. We should probably get rid of this button. That's just confusing. What we are going to do though is put an icon on this button. And I'm just going to cut and paste this code in here. You can pause it and copy it. But all we're really doing is selecting the toggle button and adding this font awesome icon. So you can pause it and type all this in. I'm just going to save it, refresh it, and there we have our button. All right, this lecture is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to stop it here. But there's going to be one more lecture on legends, and in that one I'm going to show you how to set it up so that if you turn client linears off, the client linears part of the legend uh, disappears. If you turn it on, it will come back. So that will make it respond to this layer control. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next lecture.